What is going on guys, DBG here, and in this video I'm going to be talking about what probably is the biggest mistake in NBA 2K21 my team. It's a mistake that everybody makes, including myself. I've made this mistake more times than I can count, and it is the most common way people lose a bunch of MT, and it's one of those things that even when you know the way the game works, you know your playstyle, you're still going to make this mistake. However, this video is just to think, to just make people think a little bit when they're buying players, because obviously the last thing I want is for anyone to ever feel the need to hit this button right here. The last thing I ever need want is for anyone to feel the need to hit any of these buttons. And I feel with like the tips given on this channel, you really don't necessarily have to do that. But um, anyway, so one thing I always say is obviously learn your play style, which is really, really important. It's like if you guys don't know, this is the this is my team. I sold Danny Granger for Wally Zerbiak. I sold a like I've sold a bunch of cards. I sold my Oscar Robertson because we got um, Westbrook. That was a dumb decision, but thankfully we got Smudge Parker, who's actually a beast. And then I bought E. I way overspent for E. I think I can't remember who I sold. What did I do? I just got rid of my squad. All right, that is a, a little bit annoying. I honestly have no idea what I did right there. But uh, yeah, so basically what has happened to my team is that I've sold a lot of my more expensive players. And the vast majority of the expensive players that I use in my team, like I've sold. Like I run Wally Zerbiak selling Granger. I I mean, I will run Westbrook, not the biggest fan of the card. Or I'll, run, I'll probably run Brad Davis, honestly, at the point. Brad Davis is better. At the small forward off the bench, obviously there's a bunch of guys that we have in our squad. Like our free team obviously is looking really, really good as well. So we have all of these players. And a lot of people are wondering, you're like, why? What's the point? There's so many like incredible cards. Why do I have 500k sitting there? I don't know who my power forward is, so let's just put him in. Um, and my reason is, is that I know my playstyle and these guys suit my playstyle. For example, let's just go into freestyle. So, what do I need my point guard to do? I run almost everything through my point guard. I'll be the first to say that. And my ma the main dribble moves that I will pull are Curry's um, explosives. That's, ba that's basically it. My dribbling arsenal is the, ex the explosive. Come on, do the explosive. Like, oh my god, I can't do it right now. I can't do it on camera, but... There we go, this move there, and Curry. That's basically what I have. And the way that I play the game, most of the time, I will end up spotting up from gold range. I will need, like, I need gold range and a point guard. The way I play the game, I do not need half range. Half range is overkill, like, it's exceptional. Like, half range, you can literally pull consistently from here and hit shots, especially on next gen. If you're on current gen, it's more like, kind of like, here is probably the max of, like, half range. But for me, the way I play, especially, well, depending on the gen, I just need gold range. So, I don't really play that much defense. My, my defense is very much reliant on playing lanes. So, like, I don't even need gold clamps on players. But, like, there are a few things that I do need. Like, obviously, curry slide's very important for me on a point guard. And, like, when all is said and done, the best point guards for me in this game in my price range is Smush Parker. Yes, Lonzo's better, but for what I do, Smush is better. For what I need Smush Parker for. Objectively, Lonzo is better, but I would rather have Smush on my team. I'm definitely rather of Lonzo and Brad Davis though. And the point I'm trying to get is get players that suit you. Obviously, obviously, um, there are people that are going to be in the comment section and they're going to be like, I just want to use my favorite players. I, I use X player because he's my favorite player. That is perfectly fine. Video games are meant to be fun. But do not come into a tip video on how to get better at the game and not make mistakes just so that you say, just to say that tips are wrong because you like to play the game a different way. Trust me, trust me. Playing with your favorite cards is more fun, is probably more fun. I like to do it a bit. I do it in FIFA. It is way more fun. But to try argue 
that that is an effective way of playing the game and winning. It's just not. And you shouldn't, like, people constantly coming out the tip videos and saying, I have more fun this way. It's like, yeah, you should not be looking at a tip video. <laughs> you read, like, you really shouldn't be looking at a team building tip video if that's your attitude. Either way, though, find out what works for you. Find out what way you play best. I realized after a while that I do not do anything except catch and shoot with my small forward and power forward. Like, I realized that. Like, these guys here will never dribble the ball for me. Ever. They will not dribble the ball. There is a 0% chance that I will dribble the ball more than, like, one dribble Wally Zerbiak or Antoine Jameson. These are my two favorite shooters in the game. So I use these guys. Is Granger better than Zerbiak? Yes. But at hitting wide open jumpers, is he that much better? No. There's nobody better than Jameson at hitting wide open jumpers. And then... Again, I can't even remember who I play at a power forward. It was either... Oh, no, it was, I know who it was. I know who it was. It was Anderson. It was Kyle Anderson. A perfect card. One of my... Like, I like Brook Lopez base in this game. He hits jump shots and plays elite defense. Sean Marion, I like his release. He hits jump shots and plays elite defense. And then I run through everything through my point guard and my two guard. Like, these are the only guys for me that need to be able to score at all. My centers just need to be able to run up and down the floor. So for me, this team is perfect. Yes, I can get an Anthony Davis, but what's the point of doing that for my play style? Because my centers don't do much. Like, I even regret paying 70k for E because he'll occasionally dribble the ball, but I don't do much with my centers. Like, one of the, big, the biggest problems that people make is that, for example, people think that, like, LeBron James is the best power forward in the game. I'm just going to say that right now. But if I put LeBron James in for Antoine Jameson, that's not going to make my team any better. Because I purely need my power forward to be a catch and shoot player. The biggest mistake everybody makes in this game is thinking every card needs to do everything. And that is where you're going to lose all of your MT. That is where you're going to make a bunch of bad decisions. For example, LeBron James is better. Again, that's the best example I can give. LeBron James is better than Antoine Jameson. It's a fact. There's no debate. LeBron is better than Jameson. But for what I need a power forward for, hitting wide open jumpers, give me Jameson 100 times out of 100. Honestly, give me Kyle Anderson. I'm a big, big fan of this Kyle Anderson card. The way I play the game, Kyle Anderson is probably as good for me as a LeBron James. This was my whole argument last year with Nick Batum and Kobe Bryant. I made my best team for my play style and because I played a switch everything defense I last year, I could not afford to use a six foot six two guard. So I used Nick Batum with the two guard. And I got killed for it. It's like, you're an idiot. It's like, no, it suits my play style. And that is the whole thing with all of these players. Find out who is good for you and use them. There is no reason why you shouldn't use a Smush Parker because he's a 91 overall. Heck, if you're really good with Westbrook, if you are a rim, if you run to the basket and dunk on people with your point guard, but you can't use Simmons because you need your point guard to shoot a little bit, there's nothing wrong with Westbrook. He's fantastic at that. The reason why a lot of people say he's bad is because most people create and shoot threes with their point guards like myself. So Westbrook's pointless for me. He's not objectively a bad card. He dunks on everybody. If you have Trey Burke, like I, Iverson's got Trey Burke on quick. If you green 100% of your shots with Allen Iverson and you run three pointers off the, you run three point or a three hunting with your point guard and you win a bunch of games with Iverson, keep using them. Keep using them. You don't need, if you're having a super success with one player, you don't need to like completely change it. Don't fit like, like players don't need to do everything. And that is the biggest problem like that people have with the game is that they will overspend. In from for my play style, I am getting the exact same with E and Dino as I would get with Hakeem Olajuwon. Hakeem is a lot better. I'll be the first to say it. Hakeem is a lot better than both of those guys. He does more, but he doesn't do what I need him to do, which is hit a high rate of jump shots. And I think these guys just move better than Hakeem. But it's again, for me, it's it's a different story. Uh, like, it's a different thing than most people. It's like why Buggy, when I was point center... It's like why I love, love Draymond Green. Because I used to point center cheese. So Draymond Green was the best center of the game for me. There was a million better centers. But Draymond Green was the only one at the time that could point center. So he was the best in the game for me. Terry Dishinger, like, again, objectively a good card. But I do create with my two guard. Like, I will... Most of the time, I will have one rim runner 
on my wings. Like I use, depending on the gen, I will have like a Rudy Fernandez there on the wing. Um, I've got Terry Dishinger, who's a really good dunker as well. Sean Marion, he's a 3 and D cone. Like, he's a cone. And he does that job perfectly. So, like, Dishinger, Rudy Fernandez, they both do the job. Smush Parker will do the job. Like, I'll be confident in using these guys at the end of the year. It's like 2K20. People that were 3 hunters could literally use that Diamond Wade when everybody had go cards because he did one specific thing really well and that one thing was able to win them games. And that is the biggest problem, again, that people have. They will look to me, they'll look to Ty, they'll look to other people, and when they hear this card is exceptional, they'll be like, oh, I need to upgrade it. Like, for example, again, Danny Granger. I'll say this time and time again. I think Danny Granger is one of the best um, cards in this game. I do. I think he's one of the best cards in the game. I think I got like 90k for him. He's worth it. He's worth it. His release is absolutely cash. He can dribble. He can dunk. He can... Um, he's 6'9". His defense is really good. He's got all the badges you need. He's got half range. But when I had Danny Granger, the only thing I was using him for was catch and shoot threes. And Zerbiak does ex does equally as well with his half range, half clamps. And plays a little bit better. Plays well. Similar defense to Danny. They're, I'd say they're dead even. It's a dead heap between them. So... People call me crazy and they were like, Danny's so much better than Wally Zerbiak. Why are you why would you sell Danny for Zerbiak? It's like, yes, Danny Granger is better than Zerbiak. Danny Granger dribbles better, he dunks better. And he moves with the ball a lot better. But I don't use my small forward to dribble. So why would it, why would it be a big thing for me to have 90k tied in a Granger when I can just get Wally Zerbiak? And that's just the way I look at things. I can only think about talk about it from my own experience, but from reading the comment section for so long, and then obviously, like Shake went on like a mini rant with um about Rudy Gobert, but and while I think calling Rudy Gobert a top tier cent tier center in the game nowadays is like absolutely like it's I think it's ludicrous because that card's about four months old. However. If you have success with a card, there's just no point not using them. Like, a card can be top tier to you, but not a top tier player. For example, like, what I need, Zerbiak might be the best card in the game first. He really might. After Team Act, of course. I green, every, I green most shots with him. Half clamps. Elite. However, he's not a, he's like a, a C tier. If I was making my overall tier list, he'd be like in C tier. He's, but for what I need, he's probably the best at what he does. Kyle Anderson has got really nice wingspan. His defense is some of the best in the game. And I like his release with range extender. Smush Parker has got some of the best sigs in the game. One of the best releases in the game. Smush Parker, these guys at little things are some of the best at what they do. And it just happens that these cards, what they do is what I need from my players. So yeah, these guys are not top tier, but they suit my playstyle. Like, I'm not gonna... Obviously, Sm Smush might be different. Smush might be different. He's legitimately might be a top-tier player. But um, I'm not gonna go and say Kyle Anderson's better than LeBron. For me, the way I play, he fits better. Same with Zerbiak and someone like a Granger. T-Mac's better than Zerbiak, no question. Anyone else, I think you can argue Zerbiak over any of them, except for maybe next-gen Kawhi at that position. But the general thing with Shake saying is like, so many people are like, oh yeah, if a card's not meta, there's no point using it. And I don't, I agree with the point of his rant. That like, people have become so much like, accustomed to, if this card doesn't have all the best sigs, if this card doesn't have the greatest release in the world, if this card doesn't have X, Y, and Z stats and badges, it's automatically terrible. When that's simply not the case. It is simply not the case. If a card has a 99 three-point, or like even Jameson, stats and badges-wise, Jameson's not very good. I'm going to say this right now. Like at this stage in the game, these stats are not good. But he's got the best release in the game, so everyone uses them. Like simple as. He, play, he fits a role, and a lot of people use him because of that. Ian and Dino, I think, are both exceptional cards. If you just use your centers to catch rebounds, shoot three-pointers, and occasionally run the floor, they're going to give you the same as AD. Like the, one, the most pointless thing that you can do in my team is have LeBron has have a million tied up in LeBron James and literally use him as a corner sitter. Having two million tied up in John Havlicek and not dribbling the ball with him and just using him as a spot up shooter. Having 
1.5 million tied up in clay in general. Because as great as Clay Thompson is, the guy's a spot up shooter. And there are spot up shooters you can get for 15k. It'll do almost the same job as Clay. Like, the worst thing you can do is look at overalls and spend so much MT on a card just for them to like stand in the corner. Because I'm telling you right now, if you you can get away with having two guys in your team that do almost everything and a bunch of like role players. If you guys don't remember back in 2K20, Ty Debo was winning every tournament with with Diamond Cam Reddish and Diamond Robert Covington because he didn't use he used Cam Reddish to run to the basket because he had an unbelievable dunk and hit wide open shots. Robert Covington had good defense and could hit a wide open three. He didn't even have half range, but Robert Covington was so good for him because he literally did what was needed. Play defense and hit a wide open three pointer, which was all that he needed. And Roko was one of the best cards in the game for that last year. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just think when you're buying a card. Think what you need it for. Before you buy your Anthony Davis, think is he going to do anything more than stand around the basket, be a pick and pop jump shooter, and, a, and catch some rebounds and play a little bit of defense? Because if he's not going to be one of your main players, or you're not playing this game competitively, and you're just playing unlimited games, he's not going to do that much more than Adino. And he's 10 times, he's 20 times the price. He has like 25k. Before you buy a LeBron James, think to yourself, uh, is he going to sit in the corner for me? And if your answer is yes, just get one of the cheap LeBron James cards. Um, definitely do not spend 700k on a corner sitter. But that's just the way you got to look at things. Look at... Look at cards on how they fit into your squad. Make your MT purchases based on what is needed rather than I just want to upgrade these cards. Because if you don't have a reason to upgrade a card, there's no real point in doing it. And obviously, if you are one of those people that are saying, I have more fun, I want to keep the best squad possible, I have fun doing this and that, go ahead. This is definitely not, this is not a video targeted at you. This is a video targeted at the people that are spending all their MT on LeBron because they think, that having LeBron, if they have four Galaxy Opals, replacing your Opal Sean Marion with a LeBron is gonna is actually gonna make a difference winning or losing a game. So anyway, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.